Hello my friends. Once again I've got a short story for you, but a sip of coffee first. Like my cup. This story is called Are You a Window Cleaner? I worked for a win as a window cleaner, self-employed window cleaner for heading for 20 years, most of it with Kate. So I kind of know what it's like to be a window cleaner in Ireland in the winter. So far it had been a great day and even though Steve knew that bank managers, doctors, headmasters, nuclear physicists and even saints got bad days, well, he just wanted to go home. Where was he doing this anyway? Somewhere on someone's radio he could hear the lady's David Gray song. Huh, bet the DJ has had a good show. Now, don't, no doubt David Gray still counting his cash, he thought. It was very easy to count other folks' good fortune as a personal attack. He started an hour ago at number 67 in a biting cold wind. Coming down the ladder, he'd step backwards to avoid that garden gnome, and as a result, he put his left foot straight in the bucket. Well, that was really going to help him stay warm today, wasn't it? Three houses later, the one with the huge conservatory, He'd forgotten about the thermometer stuck to the window. One sweep of the mop was all it took. Smash. What could you do? He left a note and he knew Mr. and Mrs. Flynn were very nice, but the man of the house had reminded him to be careful of the thermometer that up just the last time. So here he was, wondering what life was like for an accountant in a nice warm office, or for a truck driver flying along on a wide open road. Looking forward to sandwich time, he cleaned Milligan's bathroom window, and then he heard the words, Are you a window cleaner? He wanted to say, No dear, I'm a forensic scientist, but I always do this to relax in my coffee break. Was he a window cleaner? What a silly question. Ignoring how he felt, Steve descended the cold metal ladder. Metal ladder. Yes dear, I am. What would you charge me? He looked at her, about 55, more jewellery than H. Samuels the jewellers, and glaring at him as if he'd just crawled out from under the wheelie bin. Well, I'd have to look, love. You see, they're all different. Mine is just the same as this one, she snapped with her voice like a Jack Russell. He'd heard that one before. Same at the front and like Castle Ward House, a stately home, round the back. Do you have a conservatory? No. It'll probably be somewhere around seven or eight pounds. Bit dear, aren't you? He nearly responded that his wife thought he was a dear, but this doll was like Mrs Baxter. She wouldn't joke. He wondered if she argued the price with the butcher or the bus driver. He doubted that very much. Should he tell her he was cold, tired, fed up and didn't want to clean her windows for even for fifty pounds today? However, remembering that he was his customer service department, he replied, All my customers along here seem happy with my prices. In fact, Angie Reid over there told me it was time I put the price up. He liked Angie. She'd given him a secret weapon to zap enemy housewives. I do a proper job. Clean the frames and sills. Leave the windows gleaming. I say, we'll do right next time then. Typical. No, please. Just a command. You don't want them done now, then. She pointed at the sky. It might rain. Why had he asked her that question? Here was a Mrs Baxter, all right. Don't come in the rain. Then, why are you late? I want my windows clean regularly. Did he need another Mrs Baxter? He smiled sweetly and said gently, with a little hint of menace, you know, my dear, up here in the mount among the mountains it rains most days, and if it doesn't today or rain tomorrow for sure, after all this is Ireland, not Hawaii. From January through as far as December you can be sure about one thing, I it will rain. And it will be six weeks before I'm back. Six weeks? Can't you come back next week? Oh, yes, definitely a Mrs. Baxter. They seemed to think he could do his entire round on one sunny day in September. He would rather hang out of a helicopter to clean the windows of the new post office building in Belfast 
than have another Mrs Baxter. You see, my dear, I have a large round and I just follow it round. It takes about six weeks. He was trying to be reasonable, but if she kept it up, he might just risk pouring the bucket of water over her head. Hmm, she sounded pensive. Well, I hope you're not one of those cowboy window cleaners. She was a joke. He could hear the theme music of that awful western they show every year on the telly. Of course, he's hard to get the la up the ladders on a horse. Horses don't like ladders as a general rule. And all the current health and safety legislation make riding on ladders dodgy, not to mention the animal rights problem. You have to remember not to shoot any good customers, and ideally you shouldn't shoot any at all. Of course, there was Evans of Transparency Engineers. You could have a mop fight with him, all right. Cowboy window cleaner, indeed. He smiled sweetly at her. My customers, and my best advertisement, ask this lady if she's satisfied with my work and give me a ring if you want me to do it next time round. No, very definitely she said. Do them now. I don't suppose you can control the weather. Steve assured her with the hint of irony in his voice that he had grown with his round. When the rain is over they will still look clean. I do mine in the rain, usually. He felt that was a trump card. What number? She responded, Number 71. And as she turned away, she added, Please mind that the bulb, because the bulbs are coming through in the garden. Oh, that was a Mrs. Baxter, all right. The postman cut across Mrs. Baxter's garden every day, but who did Mrs. Baxter blame for the damaged herb garden? He chuckled to himself. Milligans were all right. Sometimes Paula Milligan gave him a Guinness as a tip. Oh, but that sitting room colour scheme, no taste. Maybe that was it. Maybe it'd be better to take up interior decorating. He changed his water at Milligan's outside tap and retraced his steps to find number 71. Placing the ladder at the bedroom window, he was careful to avoid the several million bulbs that were poking out into the air looking for the spring. Glancing around, he had to admit the garden rivaled the best on his round. As he drew the blade across the bedroom window, he saw a shape move behind the neck curtain. Oh, yes, he thought, like Ma Baxter, checking my work, not even having the decency to wait till I'm finished. He struggled round the house in the stronger wind that was biting cold. As he scraped the kitchen window, he asked us himself for the third time that morning, Why do these old dears have to put f bird feeders by the windows? He left the windows gleaming. Cowboy window cleaner indeed, he muttered. As he finished the last window, he saw her appear out the corner of his eye. Take that, he thought. Your house looked like a woman who just got out of bed, but now she looks like a real lady. I hope the coffee is okay. Do you take sugar? He looked at the steaming hot drink and the plate laden with homemade fruit cake. Please eat that cake up, she added. You could have knocked Steve off his ladder with a dry scrim cloth. I'm sorry I was a bit sharp, dear. She sounded so different. You see, that Evans fellow did my windows and it was a half a job. The final straw came when he missed my bathroom but lied about it. Dear Bill left me fairly comfortably off but I don't like to be taken advantage of. So Evans had to go. But I can see you do an excellent job. Here's an extra five pounds for you. They were very bad. She was smiling warmly. Just call me Trish. The sun was breaking through now and Steve's hands were round a warm cup. Thank you, Trish. Smashing garden. Oh, I nearly live out here since Bill went. It's where I'm at peace. Your job must be so hard in the winter. Well, there will always be coffee for you here, my dear. And cake. As he left, Steve was thinking, she's not a Mrs Baxter type, more everyone's auntie type. The day seemed so much the better, cold but a bit of weakening sunshine. After he'd finished the front of number 89, Steve went round the back. Young Mrs Jackson heard the shout, the crash, the splash. She ran to the back door where she saw Steve just getting up. His ladder was halfway across the lawn where it had fallen from his shoulder and Steve was dripping wet from head to foot. Oh, Steve, I'm sorry. If I'd known you were there, I would have warned you about the new pond. If you ever clean windows, you might be able to relate to some of that. If you haven't, well, it's not always like that. I loved it, really. But there were just those days 
and that's why I wrote that story. Hope everybody's well. Hope everything's good for you. Love and peace to you. From myself and from Kate. Bye for now. Bye.